Hello, hello there. My name is Mario, my co host Corey. We are the real guys, and this is the real show with two E's. Today, you better get your boxers ready. Your boxers of illegal substances. I thought it said boxers for a second. But I did say boxers. No, but I said boxers. Yeah, bo- like boxers like crates. No, boxers, as in. Oh, like under. Like under briefs. Garment. Boxer briefs. Yeah. Tighty whities. I was like. No, I mean, like, your like, boxers are like... And then, and then I thought you meant, oh, as in boxers, as in fight, as in, ah, yes. Yeah. And then I went, boxers in fighting or boxers as in crates, you know, yeah. of, of, like, cannabis. Sure. Because we're reviewing The Gentleman, Guy Ritchie's uh, action comedy gangster mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. Uh, produced, written, and directed by Guy Ritchie. Correct. Corey, we both saw this film. Yes. And you can listen to this uh, review... <laughs> On uh, Amazon Podcast, Apple Podcast. Last, in the last review, Corey said, I always say Amazon first, and I always say Amazon first. I've just caught myself doing it. Uh, Spotify or whatever, or you can watch our video version on the Real Show YouTube channel, The Real Show, The Real Show. Or you can follow our Twitter and the, at The Real Show FM, I Correct. think we still are. You save it every time. Um, it's not changed. Because oh, it's sometimes you get rid of the FM. I don't know if we get rid of the FM or not. <laughs> the FM is important, Corey. If you type in Real Show, we still pop up, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. We tweet sometimes. We Most, kinda, yeah. Mostly about weird Star Wars characters, and sometimes we tell you what we're doing. Yes, because it's you that runs we it. Post video. Yeah, I do run it. Well, you run the YouTube channel, so... <laughs> yes, and the Instagram. It definitely doesn't and get used. And the Instagram. Well, I, I'm using the Twitter, and that's a step. Yes. The Gentleman came out in 2019 and is a film that I saw in the cinema, Corey, the last film I saw in the cinema before the great sh- shutdown of old 2020. Uh, I remember having a great time with this film. I love it. I'm really happy we're doing it. But the reason why we're doing it is not only because it recently landed on Netflix, but also because there's a sequel series in the works starring uh, Theo James, Vinnie Jones, Giancarlo Esposito, uh, uh, Daniel Ings, Jolly Richardson, and Peter Serafinowicz. Mm. Very excited about that series. Also being made at the hands of Guy Ritchie. Yes. This film, The Gentleman, you hadn't seen it before. Nope. I told you to give it a watch. You did. First hand thoughts. As soon as he finishes his smoothie or whatever he's drinking. It's a meal replacement. Don't correct me, Corey. What 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 do you think <laughs> of this film? First I don't want dialogue, Corey, about the, the smoothie. I want dialogue about the gentleman. What's it? See, it's a best a banana smoothie. I don't care. <laughs> Twenty grams of protein. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Low sugars. <laughs> what did you think of the film? <laughs> 500 calories. Um, no, I really enjoyed the film. I didn't fully know what to... Okay, do you want my actual honest first thoughts? Yeah, go ahead. When you went watch The Gentleman, do you know the first thing my mind went to? Go on. Kingsman. For some, ah, for some reason. I, see, yeah. I, f- I thought, oh, that's the film where, the, the, uh, where Stanley Tucci steps on a landmine and starts singing. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, and it's, it's not Stanley Tucci, it's Mark Strong, but they do look similar. And as soon as, as soon as, I swear Stanley Tucci's in Kingsman anyway. Uh, I don't, he might be. I think he is. Um, and as soon as the film started, I went, different film. Mm. <laughs> I was like, this isn't guys in suits. <laughs> this, isn't guys. <laughs> this is guys in suits. Well, yeah. They're doing something a bit different. Yeah. Um, but I, I, do you know what? I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I knew what, as soon as it came on, I thought, oh, okay, it's this, I was like, it's this film. I know what this film is. I've seen it before. Mm. Um, I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. I'm now quickly looking at Stanley Tucci's in the Kingsman. Okay. Big Dave, which is, a, which is an extremely Guy Ritchie name. Well, I keep just going to Big Dave. Big Dave, editor of the Daily Print newspaper tabloid. Yes. He snubbed at a party by American cannabis Correct. baron Mickey, Michael Mickey Pearson, played by Matthew McConaughey. Uh, and he's, his hand isn't shaken, he takes offence to that. So he hires uh, Peter, his name, I think his name's Peter Fletcher, his full name's on the script. Yep. But he's just called Fletcher, or Fletch. Which is another, which is another incredibly Guy Ritchie name, everyone's got a Guy Ritchie name. You know, that sort of gangster British bruv yeah. kind of name. Hey, it's me, Big Dave. Hey, it's me, Fletch, you know. Uh, Stanley Tucci is in Kingsman 3, I believe. Oh, right. oh, he's in The King's Man. Yes. Which is the prequel. Yeah. Fair enough. You were right, though. And he hires Fletch to investigate uh, Mickey Pearson's links to uh, Lord Pressfield, yep. who has a duke, who is a heroine. Uh, has a duke who has a daughter who has a, he- who's a heroine addict. There you go. <laughs> Get and in Fletcher yet. writes a screenplay, types, he, he sell, sells his findings as he a does. screenplay entitled Bush, yep. which was one of the actually in working titles of this film. Nice. And agrees to sell it to Raymond Smith, who is the Pearson's right-hand man, for £20 million. Pounds. Correct. Uh, and then it goes on to the uh, more nitty gritty. Uh, Mr. Mickey Pearson uh, had a Rhodes Scholarship to Oxford when he was in poverty in the United States. He began saying marijuana to fellow students who were dropping out and building his criminal empire. 
uh, by using his, his cunning intellect. He now plans to sell his business to American uh, billionaire Matthew Berger for four hundred million. Yes, and Matthew Berger is played by uh, Succession alumni Jeremy Strong. Nice, who I'm a, a big fan of as well. Great method actor and fantastic as as, as Kendall Roy. I'm uh, sorry, I was just confirming my uh, inner suspicion. Oh, that what? That uh, every time Mickey Pearson came on screen, I went. I swear, was a character from Many Fools and Horses. <laughs> it is Mickey Pierce. Is oh, guy Mickey from Pierce. Oh. Well, I was about to say Matthew McConaughey. Is he in no. Only Boys and Horses? Does he do the bar gag? No. <laughs> my, uh, I was like, I was like, I was like, I swear, my head, you know, I was my head can now. Mickey Pierce from Many Fools and Horses grows up to be a, a, a gangster. Yeah. So Pierce's drugs. plan is he's got he's got twelve farms across the UK. Yep. And each farm is based in a lord's kind of manor, like their estate. Yeah. Right. And that's how he hides his his massive cannabis production. Uh, however, one of um, Matthew Berger has a secret alliance with Dry Eye, an underboss for the Chinese gangster Lord George. Yep. And Dry Eye, uh, Dry Eye has his has his informant, who is likewise named as well, and his informant uh, leaks it to a group of sort of amateur boxers who are called the Toddlers. Correct. Who are sort of YouTube grime rappers, pretty much, led by Bugsy Malone. Yeah. Who's an actual you know artist yes. and uh, makes music amazing. and his rap for this Boxers of Bush Boxers of is Bush quite good. I've listened to it a couple of times. It was on in the credits of the film and they stopped. It's the all right. Well. It's a good. I like a bit of grime. Yeah. How do you feel about grime? How do you feel about drill? Grime for I don't mind drill. Mm-hmm. Bit of a see. This is now where I don't want to name artists in case I get it wrong. Okay. Like, I feel like I offend people. Well, don't I, then. Well, don't. Because I was about to say Stormzy, but that's grime. That is grime. Yeah. Come on, don't say Stormzy's like the most. Uh, most you know middle of the road one you could have named who what okay drill drill art do i know I, no, no i don't know any of these guys <laughs> okay let's carry on then the coach is he level the coach who is a fantastic character yes who could probably appear in the sequel in the sequel series i Possibly. hope he does uh the coach kind of runs this underground fight league where they train up these lads to be you know <laughs> fight get them off the streets sorry i'm looking up drill Ias and i'm like it's a whole list of like just people right like what you would expect. It's uh-huh. like uh, this don't name anybody. I'm not, but it's like random names, random names, random. Names. I'm like, okay, this makes sense. Right at the bottom, but literally the second to last name or the third to last name. <laughs> Pete and Bass. I know Pete and Bass. All right, okay. I know of Pete. Do you know Pete and Bass? No, have you heard, have you heard of Pete name. and Bass? No. They're these two like old men. Oh right, <laughs> who, oh, it's the Northern Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just I'm, at I'm the bottom of his list, surrounded by these. Other grime artists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's P and Bass. They are, you know... Um, They're really good. They are good, actually. I quite like the Northern Boys. They're really good. So It's not the Weekly Rec, but I'll say, you know, if you want to listen to something, <laughs> listen to something by the Northern Boys. Shout out Pete and Bass. Yeah. Nobody Likes Me. Party Time. You know, great, great songs. Uh, the coach visits uh, Raymond and apologises for his students, you know, attacking the farm and whatnot, and says he'll give his service as, as penance. Uh, coach has captured Dry Eyes Informant, uh, who does get away. Yep. But Raymond is then sent to get uh, uh, Laura P- Laura Pearson, who is the... Um, or is it Preston? I don't know. No, it's Mickey Pearson. Sorry, Mickey Pearson Pressfield. That's it. Laura, yes. Laura Pressfield goes to rescue her, but one of her friends, who is this Russian guy, um, Aslan, yep. gets accidentally pushed off the balcony. Not the lion. No, just the man. Aslan, Aslan the lad. <laughs> Aslan the lad. <laughs> Uh, as lad, as I call him, mm. yeah. As lad, yeah. Pearson, uh, Mickey Pearson, threatens Lord George for going after his lab, and says, uh, and then he destroys one of his heroin uh, factories, labs, in retaliation. And then Lord George has to dry eye. You can't go around doing these crazy things anymore. Uh, but that means um, Lord George gets offed by yes. dry eye and his, his henchmen. Correct. And then it's revealed that dry eye is in league with Matthew Berger who wants uh, Pearson's business distributed to reduce the price. Uh, so basically split up the farms not only yep. by one person so he doesn't have to pay $400 million for it. Or what does he say? An, uh, a nugget under half a yard. Yeah. Which is a smudge under half a yard. I like that. You know, that, you know so that came up in like subtitles. Yeah. And they have good... Ca- I feel like they have good chemistry. I like um, the sort of business chat of this film where it's like Matthew McConaughey, Jeremy Strong, you know, uh, Henry Golding, who was really on the rise with this film. Uh, uh, great cast as well. I like any Marzan. 
Colin Farrell did a great yep. job. Uh, Hugh Grant, obviously, playing a very unlike Hugh Grant role. True. Sometimes he plays, you know, I'm the debonair yeah. man about town. Um, I'm trying to think of a film that's got Hugh Grant in it. Notting Hill, you know. I was about to say, is, I'm yeah. The, yeah, I'm the debonair man out of town. I'm Hugh Grant. But in this, he's like, all right, I'm the... You want to listen to me, Raymond? You want to get this? Oh, I've got a script. You want to, you know. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I laughed for days on this. When Hugh Grant is showing... Raymond, Charlie Hunnam, yep. the laptop recording of his conversa- of, of Matthew Burgess' conversation with Dry Eye, and they're talking in Cantonese. Yes. And he's written out the, so he's written out the scripting, and it's clearly not the language, it's yeah. what he thinks they're saying. Yeah. And it goes, um, how much money do you think this is going to be? Octopus. Yeah. And then he says, <laughs> and then Charlie Hunnam looks at him and goes, what? And he goes, it was in Cantonese, I did my best with the translation. Yeah. And then he goes to the next one, and he's and Dry says something, and his response was, "I beg for your pardon." Yeah, <laughs> and it was so quick. I was like, "That is too. That is too funny." He didn't say, "I beg for your. I beg for your pardon." <laughs> I beg for your pardon. I thought it was. I thought it was too funny. Then it's up to Mickey Pearson to you know clean up the clean up the business. He uh, Dry Eye is going after his wife. Yep. And obviously Mickey Pearson is very protective of his wife who runs the sort of car business, all female car repair business. So he goes over there, takes out dry eye, then then he goes um, to uh, take out the alliance between dry eye's men and uh, Berger by uh, taking Berger and you know, putting him, locking him up in the fr- in a fridge yeah. by saying he wants his money, you're going to rye the money so he gets the 400 million. Then um, Pearson has the toddlers kidnap Big Dave, take take Big Dave to a to a farm and make Big Dave have an accident with a pig. Yeah, good old, yep. Yeah. Which is good old, good old tactics there. Good old tactics there from Colin Farrell. They uh, then Fletcher. This is all being told by Fletcher already, yes. isn't it? This is like in the epilogue. Fletcher tells Raymond, and he's kind of recounting the story of what he's found to Raymond, and the story comes out this way, right? Yes. Very, very intelligently done, very intelligently written. Fletcher meets Raymond again, um, but Raymond reveals that he was in flak tailing Fletcher along, so it's the double double cross. Yeah. And the toddlers have stolen a stash of evidence after Raymond put a tracker on him during their last meeting when they were in, the, in the house. Yep. But after being locked in a box and then released from the box, Fletcher reveals that it's, in fact, Aslan's father, the Russian oligarch and KGB agent, who's sending assassins after all of them. Uh, Coach kills the two hitmen sent to kill Raymond, and Fletcher escapes to mirror to mirror Max, the the studio that made this film, The Gentleman, to yep. sell his film Bush. Yes. Uh, after the meeting, he gets into a cab, which is driven by Raymond, and they uh, Pearson and Rosalind, his wife, return to the the cannabis farm and they celebrate Correct. Their, their, their grand victory. Yeah. And thus is Gentleman. What was your thoughts on? Uh, the sort of weaving storylines, weaving characters of this film. I really enjoyed it. I was watching it and I was like, okay. As as soon as it was like, uh, could like almost revealed to be that, okay, this is, this is someone like going through a whole script of, mm. of events and he has like this like briefcase full of photos and videos. And, yeah. And he's just literally just, just going through a script that he's, mm. he's written. He talks um, about it as well. He goes, our protagonist is yeah. a man. He's on the hunt, but our antagonist, yeah. he explodes on the scene. And I, I, I like the narration of, of Hugh Grant in that way. Yes. Uh, there's a couple bits in the film. Uh, one's with John Eyes and one is um, with Pearson where like we do the whole thing of, we tell you it goes one way. Yeah. And then it backtracks. Backtracks, yeah. Because that's not how it goes. Because um, Grant... at that point, he's reading his script. Yeah, he's reading his script and he wants the, you know, the action. Yeah. It turns into like an action scene where yeah. he flings the table, he grabs the gun, and it's do 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 like that. Yeah. And you could believe it's happening because it's, yes. you know, fairly believable. You're in a gangster world. Yeah. But then uh, Raymond goes, well, I was there. That didn't happen. Yeah. You know, because he was obviously in the room. And he says, well, I was there. I wasn't. That didn't happen. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, you know, I've got to embellish some of it. Yeah. And it tells it how it really happened and it was just a conversation. Um, and I really liked it. And then it, I was thinking, okay, yeah, this is going good mm. and it's going good. It's nice and paced and you're kind of getting these people come in and Dry Eyes comes in. And Favourite thinking, characters? Oh, okay. like any characters? Oh, I... Because Guy Ritchie's good for his characters, you know. If we're going f- favourites, it's it's either Fletcher or Coach. Ooh. One of the two. Yeah. I think. I don't mind mm. uh, Ray either. I did quite enjoy him. 
Mm. Not that Lewis were bad. I like. I love Coach as well. That opening um, scene. The opening scene where he's the, those hoodies, uh, you know, chavs as we yeah. call them in the UK. The, the chavs are trying to intimidate him and he's not having any of it and he kind of wants to make it like a bit of a back and forth. He's like, come on, come on, lads, hit me with some back and forth. You know? I need some fire on the back and forth. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm on fire here, you know. And I can do, that's, that's my Irish accent come back there right, with yeah, Colin good. Farrell. Yeah. You know? He goes, on fire, lads, I need some back and forth. You know, make it quick, make it funny, you know, cut me with it. And then they just swear at him. And yeah. he goes, oh, that's not how you do it. That's... And then he ends up just, you know, schooling them. Yeah. He gives them the old the old backhand. He gives them the, the trip. Yep. And he's and he, it's effortless fight. You know, it's in the, let's talk about, you know, a bit of the combat. Yep. Um, the old, uh, not only do the, the toddlers bust out some, uh, what do you call that, boxing, bit of, bit of MMA in there. Yeah, I would count it towards MMA because yeah. most of it. But, lo- chi- but Chin's, got, Chin's got a big chin. Chin's got a big chin. And was using his head. Yeah. But the rest of them were... I really and Ernie, the, the left hand's fast and the right hand's sturdy. Yep. He does boxing. Yep. He's got more of a boxy style. But a lot of them were doing like, not necessarily submissions, like takedowns and take had downs. him on the floor. And yeah, there's a lot yeah. of like weird like cartwheel kicks. Cartwheel more kicks. Capoeira, but sure. Yeah, capoeira kick. Um... But yeah, they're your like... And they've all got, they've all got gangster names. They have all gangster Prime names. Primetime. Benny. <laughs> Hammy. Like I say, prime time makes sense. Yeah, Benny. Maybe his name's Ben. Maybe his name's Benjamin. That's what I mean. It's a bit Benny like prime is time is like yeah. a, is, that's a proper nickname. Right, it's, Benny. Yeah. <laughs> maybe Ernie is just maybe Ernie's just his name. Ernie, yeah. Uh, is Ernie and Benny a, a, a Sesame Street reference? It's Bert. Bert. Oh, sorry. Bertie. Yeah, but yeah, but Ernie. Um, it only makes sense because it's it, right. I don't it think. Be, I don't think Benny did he have it. Uh, he was called Eggs Begs Benedict. That's Eggs it. Benny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Because yeah. he cracks you. I don't know what the, what the joke was there. <laughs> Maybe. Not sure. <laughs> but I don't know what prime time is. Is that because I don't, I'm not sure? Maybe he likes drinks by Logan Paul and KSI. Maybe I'm he's not, like I'm the not. main event. Aren't oh I? yeah, exactly, exactly. Or yeah. chin is because. Yeah. He headbutts people. Yeah. He's got a big chin so he can take a punch. Yeah. That's the line. Exactly. Can't knock him out. Exactly. In the in the coach's fight scene, it's uh, what I meant to say what my roundabout yes. point was, he's it's effortless. Yeah. Like because obviously he's an older guy, yeah. Colin Farrell, he's he's you know, he's 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 a veteran. So he doesn't have to fight with all the fancy takedowns and spinning cartwheel capoeira <laughs> kicks. He just does a slap and a trip, trips you, bang, that's yeah. it. The uh, another character I quite like is Matthew Berger, strangely enough. But not yeah. because I'm just a Jeremy Strong fan, uh, which I am. I love Succession, which I do. But I feel like he's got a. He's kind of plays more of the flamboyant character in Succession. If you watch Succession, he's very intense. He's a very intense performance. Mm. You can see he's dialed in. He's you know doesn't look, doesn't look like he slept in seven months. He's like um uh the optics. What are the optics for this? And with Matthew Bird, it's more like. I'm the fancy businessman. I'm yeah. gonna well, I'm a nugget under half a yard. <laughs> That's, he's great. I'm a big, big Jeremy Strong fan. He gets his stars in this as well, uh, as well as uh, Michelle Dockery as Ro- Rosalind. I feel like she's got that sort of. Bit. I like the sort of uh, the fancy shoes and the sort of uh, yeah. pinstripe suits. She's got the very. She's got the swagger, and I quite like the swagger. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I. If I had to pick one, I think I'd pick Fletcher. I just like Fletcher. the weird. You like the weird? What, the what weird, about the weird? What about the weird? Like the weird, like little little thing that like every now and then he does when like Ray goes to make a steak and he burns himself. Oh yeah, just yeah. Just weird little things that he just does every now and then. When he goes to the toilet and he comes out and they're removing Aslan's <laughs> body and he comes out and he goes, I don't you know think what? I right, my hands. That um, I can't remember his name. But the big, the big bodyguard. The one Bunny. Like, his name's Bunny. That's it. The one is like, oh yeah, how much do you bench? He's like, oh, three plates out of sight. I love that guy. I don't know why. Was there something funny about him? <laughs> For some reason, he's like the yeah, exactly. Yeah. And because then he tries to trace him, and he can't do it. Exactly. Yeah, he can't <laughs> run. Yeah, exactly. He can't run. So there's something about him I quite enjoyed. And it's the other, um, and the other guy as well. I think his chin. Yeah. Uh, it's because it's them two. Is it also Bunny at the end? Where yeah, Bunny's the end. Yeah, he's got the knife. Yeah. And he says because the line is Mickey Pearson uh, kind of captures uh, Matthew Berger and says, yep. "Well, you're going to wire this money, and then I want a pound of flesh for my trouble." Yes. And it's not, you know. In, in, in finance it's from your body yes. and wherever it can be cut and obviously you're going to put you in this fridge and obviously the fingers and toes are going to freeze off and yeah. then Bunny is going to remove it for you and as you can see he's dressed for the weather yeah. and he's in a big coat it's and, like a big coat big hat big coat and hat yeah <laughs> see he's smart he's a smart man Bunny's a smart man because as as I know and you won't know you see as, as, a, as a fellow bald man oh but this is the bald man talk is it gotta have a beanie on you this is the bald at man at all talk. times 
chin's bald as well. Yeah, I know. But see, the but he, you see, that's the thing, right? Bunny, dress for the weather. I can tell you, man, lifesaver. These things. The beanie hat. Beanie, lifesaver. Head gets cold. For your birthday. Head gets cold. You know, put it on. Oh, I'm going to go in the freezer. Oh, man. Cut. I've got a I've got, I've got, I've got headphones hat. on. He's putting it over his headphones, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Putting the hat over his headphones. <laughs> Ta da! Yeah, keep that on for the rest of the show. Sure. But it's like, boo, now I'm dressed for the weather. Exactly. Lifesaver, man. Me and Bunny. You and Bunny together. No dif- That's the thumbnail. No difference. I bench. Yeah, exactly. Three, Three plates plate, side side. Exactly, exactly. Three dinner plates. That's the, that's the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is that a funny visual because you can bench press three dinner plates on the side, but also because you're assuming that instead of working out, you're just eating loads. You're just eating loads he's, of food. He's laying down. Three dinner plates. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> three din- like they go to the buffet. Bangers and mash. Bangers and mash. Sausage and mash, or as I like to call it, S and M. It's sausage and mash. It's bangers and mash. B and M. B and M. B and M bargains. Yeah. As I like to say, B and M bargains. Yep. There's a great. Also, can I mention the amount of locations in this film? It's fun. Yes. You've got the work. You've got like the workshop. You've got like the meat factory. You've got like the fancy dinner. You've got the big stately homes. You see your. Correct, mm. but I was actually going to mention a point which is almost opposite to that, which is that most of us, not is it one room? not is most, in, a lot yeah. of it's in one room, which is is in uh, Ray's house. Yeah, that's a classic screenwriting tactic. That yeah. is to base it all around one room. Because like all you see of Fletcher is pretty much that one place, that and one then house, but every yeah. now and then when he's taking pictures of people, exactly. But he'll just be like in a car and he doesn't talk, like a balcony, yeah. and he doesn't speak, and he's like ah yeah. like that. He's got a video camera or something. I love it when films can like put you in one area and go right here's like a whole film and it's one place and they can carry it. Yeah, around. yeah. I watched a film called Concession that's got um, uh, Vicky McClure in it. Mm. It was the same thing that was based in like a an after hours petrol station shop. Yep. There was that one location. I thought like, that's so smart to do as well. Yeah, you've obviously got films like Twelve Angry Men. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, stuff. I love it when I can do that. It's great. It's a it's a great device not only for storytelling. Also, just make it easier on the makes on everyone easy, involved. Makes it easier on the set, and exactly. you know what? If you can, if you can do it on one film, you know you've got a good story and good characters because you mm. don't need set pieces. Mm. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Big flamboyant things. Mm. Um, and the release date of this, this was very late twenty nineteen, early twenty twenty. Yeah. As I'm sure you can find out, um, it came out on December third. The release date twenty nineteen, and um, for you, the United Kingdom and for the United States. Oh, sorry, it was at. Uh, Curzon Mayfair Cinema, which I think might be some kind of film festival. January 1st, 2020 was the United Kingdom release date, and January 24th, 2020 was <laughs> is, the United is a visual States for release you. date. Oh, it's, it's, oh this nice. is going to be fun. Oh, oh God, I'll get this you back look on. like a... Oh, yeah. I'll get, there we go. <laughs> I'm not going to say what you look like. Let's go in, let's go in. Let's, Here we go. Mm-hmm. This is where I hope no, no one's there. It's fine. Great. <laughs> Ryan's not just staring in a window. No. Wonderful. Okay, cool. It's back on. Let's talk a bit about Guy Ritchie. Sure. Because his he had a latest film called Operation Fortune that came out on Amazon. You might be aware. Okay. It also stars uh, Hugh Grant. The Guy Ritchie makes a people people's criticism is he makes a particular type of film. Okay. He makes the gangster, you know, London, uh, big big Dave type type of film, right? Everyone's got that kind of Guy Ritchie name. Uh, and everyone's, you know, a gangster. He's basically, he's basically just remaking Snatch over and over again, okay. effectively. But with but with different names. And that instead of, you know, boxing or whatever, it's it's, it's cannabis. Or yep. instead of cannabis, it's gold or something like that. There's always, like, the one item and everyone, the characters are all after that. But it's not in a MacGuffin type way. It's like that's just what drives the what drives the story. Yeah. Even though MacGuffin would drive a story. But in this, <laughs> but in this case, it's like, you know, that's what the characters are are all about. Mickey yeah. Pearson lives with the Baron for the type of thing and he's trying to deal it out and he's trying to sell his business and get out of the game but he can't do that because alliances are formed around him and he's got to deal with the, the jungle as he calls it. Yes. He refers to the, the, yes. the jungle. And he is the lion. He is the, the lion in the jungle even though lions don't go in jungles. No. Everyone knows that. No. Lions go on savannah. Yes. But but savannah is not really good for the metaphor. No, it shouldn't you be. You can't say I'm the king of the savannah. Yeah. I'm the king of the desert, maybe, yeah. you might be able to say. But yeah, but when you're going to go, like, oh, what's up with the desert? Oh, snakes. Yeah, but would you see a lion in the desert? Camel. 
I'm the camel. Doesn't doesn't sound as threatening. No, it doesn't sound as threatening. Because like, okay, well, what else is in the desert? Mm, he's not, not going to sound threatening when he's going to go. He goes, "I'm the lion in the jungle," but he's yeah. not going to sound threatening when he goes, "I'm the camel in the desert." Yeah, but it's but, like if if he goes, "I'm the king of a desert," you're like, okay, well, there's nothing else in there other than like camels and snakes. If you go, "Oh, I'm the king of a savanna," you're like, well, what else? You got like elephants, a yeah. rhino, yeah. No. But then you say, but, but I think it's under the childish notion that all these animals just live in a like a forest, big jungle, jungle, yeah, yeah. Like I'm the tiger in the jungle. Maybe that makes sense because tiger, tigers believe, do go in yeah. jungles, rainforest. You would see yeah. a tiger. I believe technically uh, the actual king of the jungle will be a, a tiger. Yes, exactly. Well, that's not, that can be threatening. You can threaten someone by saying that. It depends. It fellow. It depends. Now look me in the eyes, Corey. I'm the tiger in the jungle. Are you intimidated? See, if if, if you look like Bunny, maybe I would be. Yeah, man. <laughs> if you if you could bench three plates like us, yeah, 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 be quaking in my boots. Yeah, exactly. It also depends on how, because I'd also argue that technically the king of a jungle would, I would put it as some kind of monkey, because they're not going to get attacked by tigers because they're up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, but the monkey's not intimidating either. No, but I'm the, the but, lemur. But they're smart. The... It could be See, smart. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's what do you value? Is it power? Is it is it brains? Intelligence. Yeah. I'm yeah. the dung beetle. Is it freedom like a bird? Like freedom like a bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? What is it? What is what is your king of the jungle? What's folks? the king of the jungle? I'd say an elephant. The elephant is like really quick. Can't True. be like attacked. An adult elephant. Come on. What what is your what is your? Yeah, king let us know. Jungle? What is the king of the jungle? Who is the king of the jungle? Is it the tiger? Is it the lion? Is it is it the elephant? Is it as Corey says? The crap animals, like a monkey or a bird. What's wrong with a monkey? Don't do any, no, no. Or a bird. Flying around, ripping people's faces off. That's not fun, is it? Flop, floppy tails flopping about. Or a lemur. I guess a lemur's kind of cool because they can jump really far. Yeah, they can. Do you mean, but by monkey, do you mean ape? I'm, yeah, I'm talking like... Um, that's wrong. You said ape is a chimp. No, 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 I'm talking like... Or an orangutan. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. I'm talking like orangutan or... Gorilla. Um, the gorilla is the king of the jungle. True. It could be. A gorilla could be a king yeah, of the jungle. but they're not in the trees. That's what I mean. So, so that's why I'm Are like, they? That's what... No, they're on the floor. Oh. I bet gorillas could... But some gorillas can climb I can't floor. imagine a gorilla... Not big... Not like a big silver bear. <laughs> not like a big heavy <laughs> gorilla. He can't climb a tree. That's what like, Maybe like a younger gorilla. A boy, three and three. He's going to go... Snap. <laughs> Sit on a branch and go... <laughs> like that and he'd fall. <laughs> But no, I meant like. So I've been very really depressed. So I can't yeah, do it. <laughs> can't climb the trees. Like a T Rex making a bed. But no, it's the younger gorilla yes. will be able to climb up that tree. I'm saying yeah. the bigger gorilla will be able to do it. Yeah. Or like a panther. Yeah. Could be the king of a panther or a or a even what's a, it called like um even a, though technically panthers are a jaguar. Yeah. Even though technically panthers are just black cats and other animals, but shh. Yeah, true. But like, let's say it's like a jaguar or a leopard. Yeah. A leopard could be the king of the jungle. Is it a quick? Let us know. Let us know. Tweet us at the Real Show FM. What is the king of the jungle? We yeah. need to know. This is where someone goes. It's the it's the, the mountain or chicken. Or someone just uses it to. I thought that's a frog. It's a frog. Exactly. Yeah. Or someone <laughs> just uses or someone uses it to just com- just throw throw hate on us. Yeah, or underdog frog for being king of the jungle. Underdog frog, the poisonous. You get some deadly frogs. frogs. Deadly frogs, exactly. You, some, you know what? Also. Hippo. Like a red lizard. Do hippos hang out in the jungle? Probably. Would a hippo hang out in the jungle? Maybe. I don't think he'd live in a jungle. I think he'd go through a jungle. <laughs> ah, right, there's a guy. Yeah, exactly. He'd pass through <laughs> a jungle. Exactly. He'd pass through right, a jungle. Bert. All right, mate. It's just it's, coming through. Well, well, we need to take that into account. Would the king of jungle be an animal that lives in the jungle or an animal that resides within the jungle? I would argue for it to be king, it has to live there. Right, okay. Because it'd be like, you can't be the king of France you if you live in, like, Belgium. Or if you go through France once a year, you can't exactly, be the king yeah. of France. Exactly. If you just move through France, you've got to... You're the king of your castle. You're the king of where you live. Yeah. This... the To move away from the king of the jungle argument, the... Hippos are savannas. They're in lion territory. Are they? Yep. All right, okay. The, I, yeah, the desert savannah. The vast desert vista. You Hippos know. would take lions. There. Anyway. The desert vista. <laughs> the... The Desert Vista. Back to the gentleman. Back to the gentleman. Great casting, as I mentioned. Yes. Great cast. Very really strong good. here. Matthew McConaughey, amazing. Charlie Hunnam, amazing. As I mentioned, Henry Golding, uh, amazing. I uh, like Michelle Doherty. Love Jeremy Strong. Colin Farrell, coach. Colin Farrell and Hugh Grant are kind of those one word, you know, coach, yeah. Fletcher. But they've got the unique characters of Colin Farrell being the Irish, you know. Um, there's that argument he has with Ernie where he goes... Um, 
you know, oh, you're 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 just who you are. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter. He's not insulting. He's not insulting you, is he? That 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 conversation's fun. Um, I like Eddie Marzan as well. Um, I know from you know, um, what was it, The World's End and stuff like that, yeah. where the more comedic roles. But here, I think he does a good job. Eddie Marzan's just a great a character actor, as I yes. call him. Eddie Marzan is that kind of guy where he's in the role. He's like, oh yeah, that's not Eddie Marzan. That's Big Dave, the newspaper guy who's. You know, offended at the fact that Mickey P- Matthew McConaughey won't shake his hand. I was going to yeah. call him Mickey Pearson, but that's the name of his character. Yes. So I would be right. The fact that Mickey Pearson can't shake his hand. And it's all the, you know, lords and ladies. That was Mickey Pearson's plan, is to ingratiate himself with the lordship of the of, of England. Correct. So he can get his farms and make his farms yeah. underground. It's a smart plan as well. It's in the it's shipping container. Plan. Matthew Berger comes in. I mean, are you, selling, are you selling me this shipping container? What a nice... What a nice, you know, hammer, he says, yeah. <laughs> something like that. And he goes, well, here are the nails. And he, that cl- classic, you know, action line. And he pushes the desk and you go under and there's the farm. And yep. It's all purple and, and, and there's loads of weed in there. You know, the devil's lettuce, probably. Yeah. The Mary Joanna. I'm also glad that, because when, when Fletcher and Jay are talking, and they're like, oh, yes. Um, the the farm got attacked, and they're like, "Oh, who could, who could have told him where who you know, where it was?" Yeah. In my head, I'm like, it's obvious who told him where it was. The guy you've just shown around. Exactly. I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm glad, but later on, he goes, "Yeah, we're not idiots. We knew that already." I'm like, yeah, "Good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, because that's it'd be He's annoying." The guy you've just shown around. <laughs> it's like Ray does. Yeah, he shows him the video. Yeah. And he goes, he go, and then and then uh, Michelle Do- Dockery is like, "Why are we watching a fight in your in yeah. your in this room?" And he goes, "That room is one of my farms." Yeah. Um, well, how do we know? Well, it's the guy you've just shown there, isn't yeah. it? That exact one. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that yeah. At the end, Jay goes, yeah, we knew it was him in the first place. Exactly. Like, Good. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> that clears it up. But would you like a nice, nice wagyu steak on the, uh, on the outside barbecue? Oh, would I? It's hmm. a lovely. It's a lovely house he's got there. A lovely house. It's nice, a nice house. It's leading know, somewhere. Walls. Um, it might lead somewhere. Oh, okay. Um, a nice little bit of sort of wagyu steak. Do you like, that, how do you like it done, Corey? Is that why go state maybe lead to well, how much do you think it'll weigh? About a pound, maybe? Or maybe a pound, maybe, maybe a few pound. pounds. How many pounds would you say it would weigh? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's a pound a minute. I don't know. Um, how do I like how my do you like it done? How do you like it done? I don't. You don't? Or don't you don't like, like wagyu steak? Don't like steak. <laughs> you don't like steak? What? Yeah. Oh, we must have discussed this before, Corey, but <laughs> this is a good topic we have to be lean on. What? You were looking at that nice cut of meat lay on the barbecue. You're like, oh, I instead nice. was just thinking, just give me a normal beef burger. And it cutting, oh, maybe, yeah. I prefer yeah, just a nice. normal beef burger. You know, I bet Ray would make you a good beef burger, though. Probably would. Don't know if I trust him. Oh. Because, because obviously, at the end, when he, uh, he goes in the freezer. Does he even eat the steak? I don't think Fletcher even eats Ray the steak. Ray does. Ray does eat the steak. Because you see him cutting into it all the time. Yeah, but I don't think Fletcher eats mm. the steak. Because obviously, at the end, he goes, oh, he goes, oh, yeah, cut off a pound of meat. That's and, and, and then it, it immediately yeah. cuts to, to Ray Oh, yeah, the meat. steak, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, that's not, that that's, that's done on purpose. Cue. Yeah, exactly, like, That's exactly. done on purpose. I'm like, uh, uh, so I don't that, know if I trust It's not it. a graphics match, because a graphics match is like an yeah. eye and like a sink. But it's called something. I, I like, would turn around and go, I just like, have you got any, got any like fruit? Maybe. Maybe something, maybe something that can't, you know, be, you know, next to a head in the freezer or something, you know. You want a rustler's? <laughs> got, yeah, yeah, exactly. Can, yeah. You, can you pop to your local like you know as does a test goes yeah, exactly. Could you buy me a rustlers, please? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's a pot noodle. We've got That's pot noodle. Yeah, got pot noodle. <laughs> the real rating for the gentleman. Mm. I'm gonna go high, so I think it's good that I start. Okay. Unless uh, there's a dynamic for real ratings. Okay. Do you sometimes go go? If I go high, are you more persuaded to go high? Or if I start and you go low, am I persuaded to go low because you went low? I, I normally have a number in mind. Do you think of this? Right, okay. And, very, and you don't deviate from that number. Very rarely. Depending, okay. Deviate from that Sometimes number. I do. Maybe I'm just more open to suggesting than you are. I do if it's very if it's like on the spot. Right. right. You know, I, if, if you make a good point, I'm like, I it's fair. I might bunk it down a bit. Okay. Or, right. I'm going to say that the gentleman, Guy Ritchie's the gentleman, is getting a 9 out of 10. I'm in agreement. Oh, okay. Fine. I'm afraid to bump up to 9.5 maybe now. But no, we'll st- if we're together on a 9, yep. then we'll sit at a 9. Yep. Great cast, great script, fantastic script, really, really well written as we know from Guy Ritchie. Great produce, great camera work, cinematography, action, a uh, bit, com- bit of comedy in there, a bit of the gangster flavour, yep. the gangster salt on the steak of the gentleman or, or on the Rustler's Burger. Uh, a bit of salt on the meat, as I'll say, of the film. And uh, great uh, performances, 
Really good. It's off the chain, as the kids would say. Yep. And I'm I'm a big fan of Guy Ritchie and a big and a really big fan of this film. Okay. Really, uh, really great when I saw it. And I'm, I'm and I will I'm looking forward. And I'm excited to the sequel series. True. Vinnie Jones, Theo James, and Carlos Pizzo, Peter Serafinovich coming to coming to Netflix. True. Which is why they've bounced the bag this yeah. film, and it got quite a bit. I think it got to the top ten somehow. And they got all the Harry Potters now, and it's got there all the top ten now. But yeah, but a lot of us, uh, the Jasmine did sit at the top ten for a bit. Yeah, it's Harry Potter, and it's um, that Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. Oh yeah, oh, oh, is no, he's doing a documentary, isn't he now? As well yeah, as well it's drama um, thing. oh, what's it called? You look it up. Um, but it's a very oh, high rating for the gentleman. I would give it ten, but the fact that we're reviewing it now means that I technically can't. So what is it? I'm, good to, um, I'm just going to give it a nine. What's it called? Give me the name of it. As for my weekly rec, um, I've actually got I've actually got a couple of things. Uh, one one I'm going to do, I think maybe now, and I'll do another one in 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 a, in a minute. But after you look up that thing, I'm going to ask you to do something. Okay, give me two seconds. Okay, I'll, I'll find it. Uh, I'll just talk a bit more about the gentleman. Uh, Fubar. Fubar. That's the one. Fubar. Yes, Fubar. Right. That, that's okay. what I was thinking. Not the, yeah, not uh, the documentary. As we sit in the recording studio, Corey, I'm going to ask you to just turn away for a, to a second while I just grab something. <sighs> this is where you shoot me in the back of the head. I knew this day was coming. Oh, it's just like that scene, Corey, the gentleman. <laughs> I knew this day was where, coming. Where you, the... you know what? You just want to... I'm going to look this way. This is a bit more easier. You, yeah. You're going to steal my hat. That's what it is. You want my hat. You want my hat. You're just jealous. I've got. I've shaved my head and you're like, Mark, can't be having that. Can't be having that. I'm now going to keep talking to the camera and try and figure out what to say while you're talking. Right, right. okay, don't do that anymore. I'm here. Okay, good. Uh, as we know, oh, he's got a good. No, he hasn't. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> What's your like? No, no, that's not a good silencer noise. What's the silencer noise like? Wait. Right, there we go. There we go. I've, I've got a funny gag, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. okay, right, here we go. Right. Give me. Right, okay, I want you to count down and then you're going to. what? Like five, okay, and then you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna shoot me. Right here we go. You're gonna off me. All right, okay. Do, do I need like an action movie line before I do it? Would you that can help? if you want. Oh god, I'm not. I'm on the spot. Uh, what do I say? Um. <laughs> oh no, I need to think of some. I, I need to be out the coach, make it quick and make it funny. <laughs> yeah. What would be quick and funny? Um. Oh god. Uh. Okay, right. All right. I've thought of one. I've thought of one. Got it. Right, okay, ready. We're gonna go. Fo- we're gonna go. Five, four, three, two, one. So you're like James Bond, Corey, where you can live and let die. (laughs) 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 For the the, the listeners, the hat just flew off Corey's head at that. Yep. That's my fault. My head's now cold. I immediately regret doing that. Yes. Corey, as we're talking. aware, um, we're we're recording this on a, a Wednesday. Your birthday, the tenth of June, is a Saturday. Yes. So I'm going to do this on the air. Happy birthday! I, 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 I weirdly I expected. Don't this. open it now. Don't, don't leave it for your birthday. But I've just given you a nice little present. And Quick question. Card. Yep. Does this has to go in the fridge? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what that is. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, I'm going to get you a little bit more next week, but but you're not opening the present now, are you? I'm opening the card. Oh, well, 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 don't because because it's got something special in it. How is it? Yeah. Okay. Just leave it in the leave it in the envelope. I'll open it on your birthday. Put that definitely not what I think it is. Yeah. Okay. It's fine because what is it? I, you don't know what 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 type is it? What brand is what it? What brand is it? What flavor exactly. is it? Exactly. You'll never know. Uh, however, my second uh, sort Your of... Your second rec second thing. Second rec, apart from the fact that Corey's birthday present. Happy birthday, Corey. Yes, um, everyone, everyone recommends me getting a gift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Reco- exactly, exactly. You recommend Corey g- to get a gift. Send it my to... Su- my... Siren F, Siren Radio. Yeah, so we've Lincoln got a... University. Yeah, yeah. We need, a, a, we need a PO box. Got a, yeah, got a pigeon box. Yeah. We need to, we need to pl- plug we need our pigeon box. need something in it. <laughs> exactly. Corey's birthday cards, guys. Birthday cards for Corey. Yeah, come on. What are you playing at? My, my weekly rec is... <laughs> Uh, season one of Succession. Okay. Now, our uh, Succession's just finished. It's yep. why we're reviewing this film because of Jeremy Strong. Uh, season one of Succession. HBO, you can watch it on Sky here in the UK. Uh, Jeremy Strong, Brian Cox, as we know, uh, Sarah Snook, uh, Kieran Culkin, uh, Matthew McFadden. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think of the guy that plays Greg Nicholas Holt. <laughs> great, great cast, great writing. Jesse Armstrong. Uh, who does? Who's written Peep Show in the thick of it and in the loop? A favorite of ours. 
True. Uh, we reviewed uh, In the Loop. We did. Uh, he also wrote, you know, In the Thick of It and Peep Show. Great, you know, intelligently written shows. And Succession is just a massive success. And it, I'm sad it's ended. It could have had two more seasons. Maybe they quit while they're ahead. Yeah. Not a bad strategy. Um, it never lost its flame, ever. It was an amazing series, really well written, really well acted. Uh, great shooting, great characters, great character arcs of the Roy family. The Roy family own the um, conglomerate of uh, amusement parks and news and ATN, the sort of Fox network of that of the succession world. Uh, they run Waystar Royco, and the, their father, Logan Roy, played by Brian Cox, is going into retirement. Or is he? Does he mm. want one last run on the company? That's what season one's all about. He stays on with all of his children, Kendall Roy, who's played by Jeremy Strong, uh, Siobhan Shiv Roy, who's played by uh, Sarah Snook, uh, the oldest child, Connor Roy, who's played by Alan Ruck, and yep. uh, the youngest, who is Roman Roy, who is played by Kieran Culkin. Nice. And Shiv's getting married. Shiv's getting married to Tom Wamsgans, who is uh, a Matthew McFadden, and as well the, the, the rise of Greg Hirsch, cousin Greg, or Greg the Egg. Yep. He's uh, on the rise in the uh, company, trying to weasel his way up to the, up to the top with Logan's help. So, uh, yeah, great um, series, great characters. Uh, I'm just going to say, yeah, season one of Succession, I'm also going to give it a nine. Okay. I may well give it a nine five, but I will stick with a nine in theme of The Gentleman. Solid. And theme of Jeremy Strong. Love Jeremy Strong. That's what I'm picturing the thumbnail is you and, you and Bunny and then me and Jeremy Strong. Okay. That's what I kind of want for this. I can try. Like I, gentleman, I can... Gentlemanly background. What is a gentlemanly background? Theme of gentlemen, like the pub, the, the, the pub, the, the, oh, the house. The house or the pub would the make house. sense. The house yeah. would be nice, I think. I'll, I'll find whichever, f- Work which, whichever works best for thumbnail purposes. Yeah. Put Fletcher in the background or something, that'd be funny. Uh, yes. With a camera. Right, and that was the 2019's uh, Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman. Very fun time with this. High ratings all around. And our weekly rec is, uh, say happy birthday to Corey, and watch Succession <laughs> Season 1. What Season 1 of Succession. Yes. Uh... Thank you very much for listening and watching. Uh, It is a goodbye from me, goodbye, and a goodbye from Corey. Goodbye.